everybody gets a chance. I don't care if you've never painted a mural and you're 15 years old, we're going to find a way to put you on a wall because this is the chance that you get. This is like no client attached. <laughs> no one's right. going to judge you. If you mess up, we'll paint over it and start over. No big deal. There was a lot of blind trust, not only on our part, but with the businesses too of like, okay, we trust you paint whatever you want. It's going to, you know, people are going to be posting photos of it and tagging my business in it. So like sure. do something yeah. <laughs> that won't embarrass me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We want to welcome everybody back to episode two of Change of Art, and I am here with Kathleen Warren today of Overall Creative out of Seattle. How are you this morning? Well, this afternoon, I'm, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, doing well, enjoying a day back at my computer, weirdly enough, after a lot of painting, so. Right? That's <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful here, so no complaints. Give us a little bit of um, background. Tell us who you are. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us, you know, what you do for a living and where Overall Creative started. Give us the whole kind of background. Yeah, um, so I ran a nonprofit that painted murals for 10 years here in Seattle. Um, and then one year ago, um, kind of spun off. I put my 10 years in at a nonprofit, which was like peak burnout. So it was time to go. <laughs> um, and my coworker there, um, Lena, who's now my business partner, and I decided to start our own company. Um, it was May last year. So it's okay. our one year anniversary this month. Okay, um, thanks. So, um, we facilitate public and private murals mostly. We do other things, but try to stay in our, in our lane a little bit with that. <laughs> um, so we work with communities and um, business owners, sometimes corporations, um, to paint murals. So where we come in is like if someone has an idea, they have a wall and it's blank and they want art, they don't even know where to begin. Um, we jump in and so we can, we're kind of a full service company. So um, we design, sometimes, but sure. sometimes we'll work with a designer they've already chosen and help them execute it. So um, we're happy to jump in at any part in the phase, you know, any phase when, you know, during the timeline of their project. Um, so sometimes there's graphic designers that design a mural but don't know how to paint and we'll paint that for them. Wow. But in general, we really love to work with like as many artists as we can, especially teaching um, aspiring muralists how to go from their studio to a wall. Um, so really try to engage as many artists as possible so really okay. spreading the wealth in seattle because as most cities probably have their like darling five muralists that they work with we right. also have that <laughs> right 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 <laughs> um so you know uh teaching artists how to paint murals and teaching communities and businesses how to execute their ideas um and my business partner is a painter and i'm more of the facilitator and okay. um, kind of like woman behind the curtain <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so full service mural company, but we've also done like hands-on events for kids and, um, okay. various other things that, you know, we'll try anything once. And if it doesn't work out, then we don't do that anymore. <laughs> sure. The, uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about the art scene in Seattle. Um, mm -hmm. Seattle's very much known for the music scene, right? Mm -hmm. Um, in, in a history of that, uh, the music scene and starting of the grunge era and, and those sort of things when I was a kid growing up, um, mm -hmm. uh, how has the art scene blossomed in Seattle? How have you seen it evolve since you've been there? Yeah, um, you know, the music scene is a much different beast now. We still have great musicians. They all tend to move to LA, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the art scene really took a turn, I think, at least the public art scene in the past like five years or so. Like okay. I said, I was in the, I've been in the mural world for like 12 years here. Okay. Um, and when I first started it, it was murals were seen as, murals were almost seen as the same as graffiti. like. If, yeah. if you put art up on the wall, it's going to attract vandalism and encourage people to do, you know, which all it took was turning a few necks to like, Always. you know, understand that that's not the case. Um, we have a lot of like uh, large, rich landowners in the city that mm -hmm. it's really hard to like find the right person and they all live overseas, you know, whatever. Um, yes. But yeah, so once we could kind of like, once street art became hot, which I think that every city has kind of experienced this like surge in... Of course the mural scene, um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of investment through the city. And also like, you know, we have some great funders here, like the late Paul Allen that was like sure. you know, injecting things into the arts. Um, so I really saw it, it took off. I think that we're doing some like 
kind of elevated designs, um, a little different than the normal street art world. Yeah. Um, it's pretty supported. It still can be a little conservative, despite the fact that we might seem like a really liberal city. We still have a lot of red tape yeah. um, and a lot of like city offices to work with. <laughs> but in course. general, yeah, the business owners and building owners have been really supportive of what we're doing and infusing the like small artists and small art scene with funds when they can, especially even during this time, which is amazing. Absolutely. So, I don't know what sets our scene apart necessarily from other cities other than it feels so communal. I feel like one thing we don't have here that I've experienced in other cities is a lot of like beef <laughs> and like <Yeah>. ownership. <laughs> right. um, it feels like when there's a mural going up that all the other artists are willing to help that artist um, versus, you know, hurt feelings and territorial attitudes. So um, I'm that. only only projecting that onto other cities that I've experienced. <laughs> right, right. Um, it's a really supportive community, although it does feel very small, just like every other city, I'm sure does. Sure, yeah, yeah. You know, I get it, I get it. Um, talk to me about, there's, there's so many big campuses, right? You've got Microsoft out there, mm -hmm. Amazon. Um, ha have any of them, uh, have you been able to work with any of them? How, how have the arts influenced, I know the arts have influenced the Facebook campuses, the Twitter campuses mm -hmm. very heavily. Um, mm -hmm. Have you seen any of that with Paul being associated with it? So um, we actually worked, we work with Facebook pretty cl closely. Um, very we cool. helped them curate a lot of their internal murals with so like pairing local artists um at the time their curator was living in new york and her okay. job was to as they were opening the seattle offices to find local artists and so she tapped into a few people she knew here including us um to help curate that so that they were paying artists that like truly live within like walking distance from the campus you know that wow. are, are gonna and you know and they have great budgets which is which is amazing so yeah. um they pay the artists not just for the piece of art but for the time they've spent over their life like you know fine-tuning that art. Wow. Um, I definitely found that a lot of the tech and money infusions are a lot more for internal purposes okay. um, for employees. Um, we actually are working on a campaign with Facebook that we're starting next week that will be um, kind of COVID related, kind of related to their 10 year anniversary of their office here, but infusing some more funds into local artists and doing some wheat paste with them. Oh, very cool. Um, so that's cool. Um, you know, Microsoft has a grant program. So like nonprofits and arts, you know, they give to that stuff, but they also have their own internal art program as well. Okay. So I think that anytime that we've worked with these companies, it has been very like for the people that work there yeah. um, and not, not as outward facing. Um, we've done some stuff with Amazon, and they have donated as well. Um, That's great. But again, it's really to infuse that South Lake Union neighborhood where they their campus is. Right. So it's kind of a, there's a lot of money floating around, but like, I don't know that it's like spreading in the way that it could. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but no, we, you know, I get we, it. Yeah, but Facebook has been such an amazing partner um, and they really have it, like, they've like engaged almost every artist that we've recommended in the city and paid them handsomely. Um, I love that and like really help them build their portfolio. And they have very few rules about the murals that can go up. Um, right. Just no computers and no tech is their only rule and anything else goes. Which is ironic, so, right? Cool. Yeah, yeah, they're like, <laughs> we have enough computers. Right, they live mm -hmm. it. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the in most interesting stories that, that I've ever read um, and and uh, was the story of David, um, gosh, I'm blanking, it was a, was a uh, Choi, uh, the, the muralist who, who did their first pieces at Facebook. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and didn't ask for payment and asked Got for stocks. stock. Yeah. yeah smart and guy. It's super smart guy. Um, yeah. just kind of like a side tangent, but it's always one of those things where, you know, artists, uh, payment for artists is big. And we talked about mm -hmm. that last week with Pander, um, and how they really are pushing contracts and pushing, um, getting what you're worth, right? Because mm -hmm. people want to say, oh, I'll give you credit and things like that. Right. But, uh, it's great exposure. Uh, yeah. Exposure <laughs> doesn't pay for the rent. Um, yeah. So uh, I think it, it's so it's so awesome to hear uh, that yeah. Seattle, the scene there, I know Miami was very much into that when I was down there. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it's, 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 it's comforting to know that they're supporting the arts that way. Um, yeah. And then, and then overall is really pushing on that. Yeah, well, and I think one of the reasons, I, I think you asked me this maybe on the call, but I think one of the reasons that we've been able to create so much art so rapidly here is that artists are supported. And yeah. so when it, when it came time to like volunteer their time for this like pandemic art that was happening, people were able to give that back to the community versus like being starving and forgotten artists. They were, sure. 
on the ready and connected to the community and people knew who they were. So like every business owner had its favorite artist friend that they wanted to call. And so it all felt really organic and positive versus artists saying like, don't ask me to do stuff for free. You don't ever support me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, totally yeah. get that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the the current situation that we're under. Um, mm -hmm. How you all have changed uh, the business model a little bit, knowing that in the past um, things were kind of normal, uh, and, and, and art was in this resurgence. I think you know, mm -hmm. like we talked about before, and, and we talked about in the last episode, striking while the iron was hot, while street art wasn't considered illegal, and it was kind of um, mm -hmm. boutique, uh, and, mm -hmm. but growing in places like Wynwood in Dallas and Seattle clearly um, okay. there's two there's two words you used on one of your posts um, mm -hmm. it's a blind trust and collaboration uh, mm -hmm. and those stuck with me um, how have those two concepts really kind of challenged you all over the past few months of this craziness that we've been in mm -hmm. well um, once the <clears throat> once the businesses started boarding up we started getting tons of emails from business owners and artists yeah. And it started to be very clear to me that there was going to be more artists that wanted to paint than there were going to be boarded up businesses, which mm -hmm. is weird because you think it might be the other way around. Right. But Seattle has a lot of, a lot of artists <clears throat> and we know a lot of them. So they sure. thought to email us. Um, and there were a lot of artists emailing us saying, I've never painted a mural, but I want to get in on this. Um, I'm a type designer or I'm a graphic designer. I don't even live in Seattle proper. I'm you know, an hour away. Um, and I started thinking like, well, if we have, you know, a hundred artists and only 50 walls, like maybe there's an opportunity for a, a novice muralist, an aspiring muralist to work with a professional muralist and design the font for their message while they, you know, the, other, the muralist paints their art. And yeah. so I just started pairing people up that have never met each other, but whose aesthetics I thought would like look really good together. It would lighten the load for them if they had a big wall to paint and they were only getting paid a couple hundred dollars. Um, they could share supplies and, you know, we would bring ladders and prime the wall for them. And so it was really cool to have these, like, because we weren't supposed to be seeing each other, these extensive email conversations back and forth of like, hi, nice to meet you. Here's kind of what I'm thinking and then tweaking it um, and showing up to paint the day of and it works, you know, yeah. and now all these people have kind of cross pollinated and built each other up. And even the professional muralists learn from the studio artists that had never painted before new techniques or tools. Um, and that was the way we made it sustainable, I think, for everybody, is that okay. everybody gets a chance. I don't care if you've never painted a mural and you're 15 years old, we're gonna find a way to put you on a wall because this is the chance that you get. This is like, no client attached, <laughs> no one's right. gonna judge you. If you mess up, we'll paint over it and start over, no big deal. Um, so I, you know, my list, I'm, I think I have like four muralists left that haven't been given walls, but I have, I have walls for them now um, awesome. that I'm trying to get. So yeah, it was equal opportunity for all muralists. And then we tried to be thoughtful for the artists um, and businesses that were being paired together. But yeah, so blind, there was a lot of blind trust, not only on our part, but with the businesses too, of like, okay, we trust you, paint whatever you want. It's gonna, you know, people are gonna be posting photos of it and tagging my business in it. So like, sure. do something yeah. <laughs> that won't embarrass me. Right, yeah. Yep. yeah. That's so. I, It's such a microcosm, right? A blind trust and, and and collaboration into where we've all had to go um, mm -hmm. during during this COVID-19 crisis. And I think we talk about that a lot at Better in, in having to build, um, like trust is the most important thing, right? Because we're not right. seeing each other, we're not sitting next to each other every day. And so mm -hmm. what a great example of using trust, you know, for, for people who have never met each other, artists who have never worked with each other to come and mm -hmm. really combine the efforts to make something as beautiful as they're making. Um, mm -hmm. So, which is which is really cool. What's what's been one of the greatest challenges that you faced during this time? Maybe it's personally, maybe it's professionally. Um, honestly, it's been getting a hold of people. Okay. <laughs> no one's where they usually are. Right. Right. Um, so knocking on businesses or communicating with people becomes, you know only through email, um, having like honest conversations, having site visits where you can see someone's facial expression when you express an idea and they don't like it. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I think that that kind of just like personal relationship. Um, I don't know. I haven't had that many problems. <laughs> like, I mean, this has, been, this has been obviously like, um, there's not a lot of funding floating around. Okay. Um, most artists have been paid, but a lot of artists haven't and they've just given their time. 
So that's been kind of hard when I have to tell an artist, like I, I do have a wall for you, but there's no funding. Um, so I like, you know, that annoys me more than hurts me, but it's the state of things. And it's, you know, some artists have already gotten commissions for when everything reopens, you know, based on the free mural that they did. So that's been heartwarming to like see that process. Yeah. Um, I've only had two maybe frustrating encounters. I've, I've worked with all these muralists that I've known forever and never worked with them before. And so I've gotten to see work ethic, which has yeah. been really interesting and right. learn about like this person who hustles and this person who doesn't. <laughs> and so I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited to reward the hardworking artists on the other side of this when we do get another like Facebook commission or something that's like really high paying to say like, hey, thanks for having a good attitude during this whole thing. Yeah. Um, so it's been such an amazing learning experience for our company um, and such great connecting, like uh, networking for us. Sure. Um, working with people from all over the city that we've seen their name on Instagram, but never met them in person. So it's been kind of a, I feel like the muralists in the city feel like they've socialized more in the past eight weeks than they have all year in their studios, <laughs> which is right? ironic. Go figure. Yeah. 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 You mentioned yeah. on our call the other day how, you know, it's exhausting, right? These days can be exhausting. Uh, mm -hmm. um, painting murals is, is an exhausting process. Mm -hmm. um, what is the feeling that what, when you come home at night, um, what's the feeling that you have uh, that, that when, you, when you finished one of these projects, one of these beautiful murals? Um, well, I love the days that we are out painting. I love that feeling because I come home physically exhausted instead yeah. of the weird exhaustion I feel around three o'clock every day after just being home doing nothing where I feel like Coffee I need to time, go to yeah. bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, I feel good. I feel excited to share the story and to like write about it for our Instagram posts. Um, I feel excited to reach out to the business owner and make sure they're happy and talk about what to do with the art afterwards. Um, yeah. The steps leading before and after the mural are kind of my strong suits. Um, making sure that, everyone's properly credited and then, you know, mm -hmm. checking in with the artists. I love to do a postmortem. I do it with my business partner and with most artists. So what did you learn during this process? Um, what would you have done differently if you could do it again? Um, you know, so I can take those like highs and lows from each project and try to keep only recreating the highs and not the lows. Right. Um, so kind of, yeah, I mean, I feel proud for what we're doing. Um, I feel proud, like really proud of the artists for saying yes and, making such beautiful work um, and just like honored to support them and to support the whole city right now, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> and keep, you know, drawing off of that question. We, we talked about it a little bit um, on the, on the pre-production call, but how have you seen some of the artists that you worked with change or how has it been, it, has it been different than what you may have expected in, in talking with them or, or seeing their processes and, and um, just overall like, like creating a project with them uh, mm -hmm. versus maybe what would have happened prior or what did happen prior? Um, well, I've watched a lot of artists, like we talked about the freedom of being able to do what you want during this time because yeah. there's not a large budget in the client, like death by committee review of board course. of your design. <laughs> um, I've seen a lot, you know, a lot of artists said, oh yeah, I'd love to do this, but do you mind if I try spray paint? I've never used it before. Great, do it, let's yeah. do it. Yeah, um, you know, or like, uh, I've never gone bigger than eight by eight. You gave me a you know, 40 foot wall, like, can you help me with this? Do you have a projector or do you know how to yeah. use the grid system? Yep. Um, and we have all those tools. We have like a storage unit with an arsenal, of whatever you need to make a mural. So, you know, I did a lot of like running around at weird hours in the night and early in the morning, you know, dropping paints for whoever likes to work at those hours. Um, so I saw the artist change just with some confidence that they could try and there was no fail because we have nothing but time and you can right. just try again. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I think, and I also think that through meeting everyone, I mean, there's, as you know, we spoke about this a little bit, like street art can be a little like ego based. Right. Um, and that having these people work on walls beside each other and they got to know each other and like, Hey, you're really good at that. Can you teach me that? Or like, Hey, I'm out of black, you know, Montana spray paint or whatever. Right. Do you have a little left? Um, I think a lot of people who maybe didn't think they would like each other learned that they do like each other. Yeah. Um, and might want to work on stuff in the future. So I think that was really positive. Um, but there are a lot of artists that are feeling scared and beat sure. down. And um, so many of my friends that have 
gallery shows have been canceled or postponed or they've had to do a live show and they've been dreading it, but then it goes, okay. You know, <laughs> it's, like, right. yeah. it's just like the unknown of all of that has been interesting to observe. Um, we miss our art scene. We miss our art walks and getting yeah. together. Um, but <laughs> so we're going through this time now. It's a little crazy, but it's going to be over at, at some point. It'll be over mm -hmm. in, in, in 20 years when you're talking with your family, when you're talking with your friends, what will you tell them was the one thing that impacted you the most during this time? My, well, not being able to fly back to my family in South Carolina has mm. been the biggest impact for me personally. Right. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's it. It's a kind of like thinking about like, <clears throat> how do you set up your life in a way that if, shit hits the fan right. <laughs> and a worldwide pandemic happens yep. that you can be with the ones that you love. Not that yep. I don't love my life here, but it definitely has been hard to be away from my family. Yep. Um, my business partner's family's in California. So she got to drive down, you know, and see them. Yep. But, um, that's been a big one for me. Um, yeah, but art wise, yeah. art wise, I think that it's been a reassurance that being nice is always a good idea <laughs> because people have said yes to us when we've asked them to create art because we've helped them, you know, and then we're helping other people do things that I know will come back to us twofold. It's not the only reason we're doing it, but that supporting other people really allows you to feel supported. And when you're supported and you have that foundation, then you can help other people. And it's this kind of great cycle. And so never once during this pandemic have I felt like I'm asking too much you know, or like calling in a favor. It's just tit for tat kind of yeah, over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's great. Um, and so many people are in the same boat, right? So many people are not able to go visit family and so many people are not able to, uh, even young artists. Um, we've been talking about this a lot, like the graduates uh, straight out of college, you know, um, or straight out of an MFA and, and they don't know what they're going to do. Um, right. And they don't know how to, how to, how to go to the next step. Um, mm -hmm. what, what's, what's the best piece of advice that you can give, um, those artists now, those musicians, those photographers who are, who are really struggling to find work, um, but who may be, who may be dealing with depression, who may be dealing with some anxiety mm -hmm. about this, you know, you guys at overall are really helping a lot of them. Um, what's some, your, the best piece of advice you have for them this time? Well, I'm not a, you know, a practicing painter or anything myself, but I think mm -hmm. that, all of us know that just getting up and start moving in the morning is important. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. tempting not to. Right. Um, but, you know, I've heard of all these creative things that artists are doing, um, musicians who are just creating music every day and putting it online so that filmmakers can use it for free in the short films they're making. Yeah. Um, and not everything has to generate a profit, but keeping that practice and, and continuing your practice and getting better every day at your practice. And yeah. now's the time to be taking risks and I hate to say offer your services for free, but what else are you going to do and make those connections happen? Do right. favors for people. Say, I'd love to do this for you. When you reopen, if you want a mural, like we can talk about that. You know, I think that um, saying yes, you know, to everything safely right now sure. is kind of my MO. Um, because why not? Right. Because otherwise I'm just going to watch Netflix and feel sad about myself. <laughs> <laughs> um so getting out, moving, moving your body, but more importantly, working your brain and your hands, if that's how you work. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, it's been amazing. The artists who have said yes to us have already benefited from it. So um, say yes would be my, that's awesome. you know, within reason. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. You still have to pay say the yes bills. To, but. Say no, yes to nice people and it will come back to you, but yeah. You know, take a job somewhere that's not glamorous, but continue sure. your practice on your on the side and right. do what you have to do. I think there's something so important to that. Yeah, we've said yes to a few jobs that are definitely not what we do during this time, just to pay the bills. But we're just not right. going to post about this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the whole change of art thing, right? That's the change of the business model. It's the change of doing whatever you have to do. If if yeah. you have to go work at Walmart so that you can feed this, you know, this desire to paint. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that helps you or, or, mm -hmm. or whatever, it, whatever it is, you know, during yeah. this time. Like, and one of the things that I've been, um, I made a pledge with myself that I wasn't going to buy anything off of like Amazon during this time. So I've been, when I want, when I'm out of something, I just ask my, you know, social media crowd, like, 
who in town makes an amazing face oil or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and so I've been buying all local, which has been great. And also really loving the barter system, which yeah. I think artists can take advantage of. Like, do you need a new logo for your company? I need some cushions sewn for my, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um, or I think, I think there's no harm in asking yeah. like, Hey, I'm struggling right now. Does anyone need anything like a portrait of your kid or your house painted? Um, when we first started, I had a bunch of, um, uh, you know, servers, bartender friends that just said like, it's Friday happy hour. Like if you were going to come drink a margarita with me, could you just Venmo me $7 now, please? Right. <laughs> like I need to make rent. Yeah. And it was like, Oh, I would definitely would have had two margaritas. So sure. I'm mowing you $7. I'm not going to spend it anyways. I think that being honest with what you need um, and bartering, that's the beauty of a creative community, right? Is you all have different skills and you can trade them yep. gardening for a logo or whatever. No one spends any money. Everyone comes out on top. I completely <laughs> agree with you. Well, I want to, I want to take um, a few minutes that I always do this. We, we take our pod decks and we do a okay. little, a little um, pod deck roulette. Um, so when you tell me to stop, I'll stop. And then I'm going to read okay. the question that comes up. So Okay. Stop. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. What's, what's left on your bucket list? In life? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> In whatever. Um, I mean, there's a lot left on my bucket list. Um, Two come to mind for some reason right off the bat. One is I love road trips, so I, I drive around the U.S. a lot as much as I can. Nice. Um, top of my list right now is to go see the Badlands. Okay. Um, uh, it just kind of looks like an amazing, like, alien moonscape. Uh, and it's, you know, not terribly far from where I am up, up in the northern right. you know, part. Um, and then another one is get a tattoo. <laughs> I, I I've been talking about it getting one for like 20 years and I'm too fickle to like commit to anything uh, of course. but this pandemic has made me really feel like I really am going to get one on the other side of this <laughs> do it those are very shallow it. bucket list items I have much deeper ones I'm sure but top of mind <laughs> I love it we'll do one more we'll do one more okay tell me when when okay um, oh, it's a would you rather. This is a good one. Okay. Um, would you rather never celebrate your birthday again or never drink alcohol again? I hate my birthday. It's gonna make <laughs> it's gonna make me sound like a lush, but I'd rather not celebrate my birthday. I love it. That's my a good answer. My birthday's in like in like a week. I I usually yeah I try to not tell anyone about it, but it always happens. <laughs> well, now everybody who watches is gonna wish you a happy birthday. So I could be okay with either, but like. That's a, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I would agree with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like other people's birthdays so much better. Yes. The giving is so much better in my opinion. Yes. Uh, so one, one last question, and I want to kind of wrap it up. Um, uh, what is the, the one thing right now, as we're dealing with all of this, that gives you hope and that gives you optimism that we're going we're gonna to get through this? Um, I mean, I think what gives me hope is seeing – how supportive everyone's been of each other that um, it hasn't been like one music venue is going under and suffering. It's like, Hey, all the music venues are going to get together and send letters and make calls and try to make our whole music scene rise up. Yeah. Um, and it's not one restaurant needs to feed their employees. It's all of the restaurants and the same with artists. Um, in a world where things are popping up, like new restaurants and new ideas are just popping up all the time. It does, everything feels a little bit like singular and kind of self interested. Yeah. And this has shown that it, it's not that way. Um, and I hope that on the other side of this, that that'll continue and we'll continue to support each other's endeavors um, and each other as people checking in on people that you love yeah. or that you barely know and make sure they're okay. I think it'll make us a much happier community. I mean, our neighborhood people didn't always talk to each other and now it's like a Norman Rockwell painting over here. Right. Like people are on the streets, like learning how to ride their bikes. There's like bubbles and like birds. <laughs> uh, and so it's changed. It's made us all slow down a little bit. Yeah. Um, and you know, made us all maybe a little sick of our phones and computers and getting out into the world has been something to look forward to. Um, yeah. So I hope we'll just have a little, like it's been shaken up just enough yeah. that we'll kind of keep some of these habits gardening 
Every, all of our neighbors are growing their own food now. I mean, it's crazy. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've um, already killed one whole round of it, so we're trying again. Oh, <laughs> oh you've got time. So right, we have time. We have time. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess I have. It has restored my faith in humanity, I guess, a little bit. Awesome. Um, but yeah, I hope the good things will stick, and then the virus will go away. Yeah, that's great. We'll see. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Kathleen, it was such an honor to talk to you and to hear more about overall and what you all are doing. Um, I'm excited to see the last four murals come, and I'm excited yeah. to hopefully <laughs> see more uh, from you all. So everybody, please check out um, uh, Overall Creative on Instagram. And, and um, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, we'll talk soon. Okay. <laughs>